On the Morning of Christ's Nativity by John Milton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao On the Morning of Christ's Nativity This is the month, and this the happy morn, Wherein the Son of Heaven's eternal King, Of wedded maid and virgin mother born, Our great redemption from above did bring, for so the holy sages once did sing that he our deadly forfeit should release and with his father work us a perpetual peace that glorious form that light unsufferable and that far-beaming blaze of majesty wherewith he wont at heaven's high council table to sit the midst of trinal unity he laid aside and here with us to be forsook the courts of everlasting day and chose with us a darksome house of mortal clay. Say, heavenly muse, should not thy sacred vein afford a present to the infant God? Hast thou no verse, no hymn, nor solemn strain to welcome him to this his new abode? Now while the heaven by the sun's team untrod hath took no print of the approaching light, and all the spangled host keep watch in squadrons bright, See how from far upon the eastern road The star-led wizards haste with odour sweet. O oh, run, prevent them with thy humble ode, And lay it lowly at his blessed feet. Have thou the honour first thy lord to greet, And join thy voice unto the angel choir, From out his secret altar touched with hallowed fire. The Hymn It was the winter wild, while the heaven-born child all meanly wrapped in the rude manger lies nature in awe to him had doffed her gaudy trim with her great master so to sympathize it was no season then for her to wanton with the sun her lusty paramour only with speeches fair she woos the gentle air to hide her guilty front with innocent snow and on her naked shame pollute with sinful blame the saintly veil of maiden white to throw confounded that her maker's eyes should look so near upon her foul deformities but he her fears to seize sent down the meek-eyed peace she crowned with olive green came softly sliding down through the turning sphere his ready harbinger with turtle wing the amorous clouds dividing and waving wide her myrtle wand she strikes a universal peace through sea and land. Nor war or battle sound was heard the world around. The idle spear and shield were high uphung. The hooker chariot stood unstained with hostile blood. The trumpet spake not to the armed throng. And kings sat still with awful eye, as if they surely knew their sovereign lord was by. But peaceful was the night, wherein the Prince of Light, his reign of peace upon the earth began. The winds with wonder whist, smoothly the waters kissed, whispering new joys to the mild ocean, who now hath quite forgot to rave, while birds of calm sit brooding on the charmed wave. The stars with deep amaze stand fixed in steadfast gaze, bending one way their precious influence and will not take their flight for all the morning light, or Lucifer, that often warned them thence. But in their glimmering orbs did glow, until their Lord himself bespake, and bid them go. And though the shady gloom had given day her room, the sun himself withheld his wonted speed, and hid his head for shame, as his inferior flame, the new enlightened world no more should need. He saw a greater sun appear, than his bright throne or burning axe or tree could bear. The shepherds on the lawn, or ere the point of dawn, sat simply chatting in a rustic row. Full little thought they then that the mighty Pan was kindly come to live with them below. Perhaps their loves, or else their sheep, was all that did their silly thoughts so busy keep. When such music sweet their hearts and ears did greet, as never was by mortal finger struck, divinely warbled voice answering their stringed noise as all their souls in blissful rapture took. 
the air such pleasure loath to lose with thousand echoes still prolongs each heavenly close nature that heard such sound beneath the hollow round of cynthia's seat the airy region thrilling now wast almost won to think her part was done and that her reign had here its last fulfilling she knew such harmony alone could hold all heaven and earth in happier union at last surrounds their sight a globe of circular light that with long beams the shamefaced night arrayed the helmed cherubim and sworded seraphim are seen in glittering ranks with wings displayed harping in loud and solemn choir with unexpressive notes to heaven's new-born air such music as tis said before was never made but when of old the sons of morning sung while the creator great his constellations set and the well-balanced world on hinges hung and cast the dark foundations deep and bid the weltering waves the oozy channel keep ring out ye crystal spheres once bless our human ears if ye have power to touch our senses so and let your silver chime move in melodious time and let the bass of heaven's deep organ blow and with your ninefold harmony make up full consort to the angelic symphony for if such holy song enwrap our fancy long time will run back and fetch the age of gold and speckled vanity will sicken soon and die and leprous sin will melt from earthly mould and hell itself will pass away and leave her dolorous mansions to the peering day yea truth and justice then will down return to men orbed in a rainbow and like glories wearing mercy will sit between throned in celestial sheen where the radiant feet the tissued clouds down steering and heaven as at some festival will open wide the gates of her high palace hall but wisest fate says no this must not yet be so the babe yet lies in smiling infancy that on the bitter cross must redeem our loss so both himself and us to glorify yet first to those ye chained in sleep the wakeful trump of doom must thunder through the deep with such a horrid clang as on mount sinai rang while the red fire and smouldering clouds outbreak the aged earth aghast with terror of that blast shall from the surface to the centre shake when at the world's last session the dreadful judge in middle air shall spread his throne and then at last our bliss full and perfect is but now begins for from this happy day the old dragon underground in straighter limits bound not half so far casts his usurped sway and wroth to see his kingdom fail swings the scaly horror of his folded tail the oracles are dumb no voice or hideous hum runs through the arched roof in words deceiving apollo from his shrine can no more divine with hollow shriek the steep of delphos leaving no nightly trance or breathed spell inspires the pale-eyed priest from the prophetic cell the lonely mountains o'er and the resounding shore a voice of weeping heard and loud lament from haunted spring and dale edged with poplar pale the parting genius is with sighing scent with flower inwoven tresses torn the nymphs in twilight shade of tangled thickets mourn in consecrated earth and on the holy hearth the lairs and lemurs moan with midnight plaint in urns and altars round a drear and dying sound affrights the flamens at their service quaint and the chill marble seems to sweat while each peculiar power forgoes his wonted seat peor and balaam forsake their temples dim with that twice battered god of palestine and mooned ashtaroth heaven's queen and mother both now sits not girt with tapers holy shine the lyric hammon shrinks his horn in vain the tyrian maids their wounded thammuz mourn and sullen moloch fled hath left in shadows dread his burning idol all of blackest hue in vain with cymbals ring they call the grisly king in dismal dance about the furnace blue the brutish gods of nile as fast isis and oris and the dog anubis 
haste. Nor is Osiris seen in Memphian grove or green, trampling the unshowered grass with lowings loud. Nor can he be at rest within his sacred chest, nought but profoundest hell can be his shroud. In vain, with timbreled anthems dark, the sable stoled sorcerers bear his worshipped ark. He feels from Judah's land the dreaded infant's hand, the rays of Bethlehem blind his dusky ain. Nor all the gods beside longer dare abide, not Typhon huge ending in snaky twine. Our babe, to show his godhead true, can in his swaddling bands control the damned crew. So, when the sun in bed, curtained with cloudy red, pillows his chin upon an orient wave, the flocking shadows pale, troop to the infernal jail, each fettered ghost slips to his several grave. And the yellow skirted fays fly after the night steeds, leaving their moon loved maze. But see the virgin blessed hath laid her babe to rest. Time is our tedious song should here have ending. Heaven's youngest teamed star hath fixed her polished car, her sleeping lord with handmade lamp attending. And all about the courtly stable, bright harnessed angels sit in order serviceable. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Christmas Hymn by Alfred Domit From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada A Christmas Hymn It was the calm and silent night Seven hundred years and fifty-three had Rome been growing up to might, and now was queen of land and sea. No sound was heard of clashing wars, peace brooded o'er the hushed domain. Apollo, Pallas, Jove, and Mars held undisturbed their ancient reign in the solemn midnight centuries ago. Twas in the calm and silent night the senator of haughty rome impatient urged his chariot's flight from lordly revel rolling home triumphal arches gleaming swell his breast with thoughts of boundless sway what wrecked the roman what befell a paltry province far away in the solemn midnight centuries ago within that province far away went plodding home a weary boor a streak of light before him lay fallen through a half-shut stable door across his path he passed for not told what was going on within how keen the stars his only thought the air how calm and cold and thin in the solemn midnight centuries ago o oh, strange indifference low and high drowsed over common joys and cares the earth was still but knew not why the world was listening unawares how calm a moment may precede one that shall thrill the world forever to that still moment none would heed man's doom was linked no more to sever in the solemn midnight centuries ago it is the calm and solemn night a thousand bells ring out and throw their joyous peals abroad and smite the darkness charmed and holy now the night that erst no name had worn to it a happy name is given for in that stable lay newborn the peaceful prince of earth and heaven in the solemn midnight centuries ago Alfred Domit. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Trist Noel by Louise Imogen Guinea. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Trist Noel. The ox openeth wide the door and from the snow he calls her in 
and he has seen her smile therefore our lady without sin now soon from sleep a star shall leap and soon arrive both king and hind amen amen but o oh, the place could i but find the ox hath hushed his voice and bent true eyes of pity o'er the mow and on his lovely neck forspent the blessed lays her brow around her feet full warm and sweet his bowery breath does meekly dwell amen amen but sore am i with vain travel the ox is host in judah's stall and host of more than only one for close she gathereth withal our lord her little son glad hind and king their gift may bring but would to-night my tears were there amen amen between her bosom and his hair end of poem this recording is in the public domain the flight into egypt a ballad by francis mahoney father prout from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox by thomas peter as the narrator sonia as the gypsy and craig franklin as joseph the flight into egypt a ballad there's a legend that's told of a gypsy who dwelt in the lands where the pyramids be and her robe was embroidered with stars and her belt with devices right wondrous to see and she lived in the days when our lord was a child on his mother's immaculate breast when he fled from his foes when to egypt exiled he went down with saint joseph the blessed this egyptian held converse with magic methinks and the future was given to her gaze for an obelisk marked her abode and a sphinx on her threshold kept vigil always she was pensive and ever alone nor was seen in the haunts of the dissolute crowd but communed with the ghosts of the pharaohs i ween or with visitors wrapped in a shroud and there came an old man from the desert one day with a maid on a mule by that road and a child on her bosom reclined and the way led them straight to the gypsies abode and they seemed to have travelled a wearisome path from thence many many a league from a tyrant's pursuit from an enemy's wrath spent with toil and o'ercome with fatigue and the gypsy came forth from her dwelling and prayed that the pilgrims would rest them a while and she offered her couch to that delicate maid who had come many many a mile and she fondled the babe with affection's caress and she begged the old man would repose here the stranger she said ever finds free access and the wanderer balm for his woes then her guests from the glare of the noonday she led to a seat in her grotto so cool where she spread them a banquet of fruits and a shed with a manger was found for the mule with the wine of the palm tree with dates newly culled all the toil of the day she beguiled and with song in a language mysterious she lulled on her bosom the wayfaring child when the gypsy anon in her ethiop hand took the infant's diminutive palm oh twas fearful to see how the features she scanned of the babe in his slumber so calm well she noted each mark and each furrow that crossed or the tracings of destiny's line whence came ye she cried in astonishment lost for this child is of lineage divine from the village of nazareth joseph replied where we dwelt in the land of the jew we have fled from a tyrant whose garment is dyed in the gore of the children he slew we were told to remain till an angel's command should appoint us the hour to return but till then we inhabit the foreigner's land and in egypt we make our sojourn then ye tarry with me cried the gypsy in joy and ye make of my dwelling your home 
many years have i prayed that the israelite boy blessed hope of the gentiles would come and she kissed both the feet of the infant and knelt and adored him at once then a smile at the face of his mother who cheerfully dwelt with her host on the bank of the nile end of poem this recording is in the public domain cana by james freeman clark from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia cana dear friend whose presence in the house whose gracious word benign could once at cana's wedding feast change water into wine come visit us and when dull work grows weary line on line revive our souls and let us see life's water turn to wine gay mirth shall deepen into joy earth's hopes grow half divine when jesus visits us to make life's water glow as wine the social talk the evening fire the homely household shrine grow bright with angel visits when the lord pours out the wine for when self-seeking turns to love not knowing mine nor thine the miracle again is wrought and water turned to wine End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lost Sheep, the Ninety and Nine, by Elizabeth Cecilia Clefane, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Four, The Higher Life, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator, Thomas Peter as the flock, Jason in Canada as the shepherd and lian yao as the angels the lost sheep the ninety and nine there were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fold but one was out on the hills away far off from the gates of gold away on the mountain wild and bare away from the tender shepherd's care lord thou hast here thy ninety and nine are they not enough for thee but the shepherd made answer tis of mine has wandered away from me and although the road be rough and steep i go to the desert to find my sheep but none of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed nor how dark was the night that the lord passed through ere he found his sheep that was lost out in the desert he heard its cry sick and helpless and ready to die lord whence are those blood drops all the way that mark out the mountain track they were shed for one who had gone astray ere the shepherd could bring him back lord whence are thy hands so rent and torn they are pierced to-night by many a thorn but all through the mountains thunder riven and up from the rocky steep there rose a cry to the gate of heaven rejoice i have found my sheep and the angels echoed around the throne rejoice for the lord brings back his own end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sheepfold by sarah pratt mclean green from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter as the narrator jason in canada as the master and craig franklin as the shepherd the sheepful the master of the sheepful that guards the sheepful bin look out in the gloom and meadows where the long night rain begin so I called to the hireling shepherd is my sheep is they all come in oh then says the hireling shepherd there's some these black and thin and some these poor ovators but the rest these are all brung in but the rest 
these all brung in then the master up the sheepful the guards the sheepful bin goes down in the gloomer meadows where the long night rain begin so he let down the bass of the sheepful calling soft come in come in calling soft come in come in then up through the gloomer meadows through the cold night rain and wind and up through the gloomer and rain path where the sleep are pierced and thin the poor lost sheep of the sheepful they all comes gathering in the poor lost sheep of the sheepful they all comes gathering in end of poem this recording is in the public domain the good shepherd with the kid by matthew arnold from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin as the narrator and lian yao as tertullian the good shepherd with the kid he saves the sheep the goats he doth not save so rang tertullian's sentence on the side of that unpitying phrygian sect which cried him can no fount of fresh forgiveness lave who sins once washed by the baptismal wave so spake the fierce tertullian but she sighed the infant church of love she felt the tide stream on her from her lord's yet recent grave and then she smiled and in the catacombs with eyes suffused but heart inspired true on those walls subterranean where she hid her head in ignominy death and tombs she her good shepherd's hasty image drew and on his shoulders not a lamb a kid end of poem this recording is in the public domain two sayings by elizabeth barrett browning from the world's best poetry volume one the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada two sayings of the holy scriptures beat like pulses in the church's brow and breast and by them we find rest in our unrest and heart deep in salt tears do yet entreat god's fellowship as if on heavenly seat the first is jesus wept whereon is pressed full many a sobbing face that drops its best and sweetest waters on the record sweet and one is where the christ denied and scorned looked upon peter o oh, to render plain by help of having loved a little and mourned that look of sovereign love and sovereign pain which he who could not sin yet suffered turned on him who could reject but not sustain elizabeth barrett browning end of poem this recording is in the public domain a ballad of trees and the master by sydney lanier from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao a ballad of trees and the master into the woods my master went clean forspent forspent into the woods my master came forspent with love and shame but the olives they were not blind to him the little grey leaves were kind to him the thorn tree had a mind to him when into the woods he came out of the woods my master went and he was well content out of the woods my master came content with death and shame when death and shame would woo him last from under the trees they drew him last twas on a tree they slew him last when after the woods he came end of poem this recording is in the public domain Stabat Mater Dolorosa From the Latin of Fra Jacoponi Translation of Abraham Coles 
From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Stabat Mater Dolorosa Stood the afflicted mother weeping, Near the cross her station keeping, Whereon hung her son and lord, Through whose spirit sympathizing, Sorrowing and agonizing, Also passed the cruel sword. O oh, how mournful and distressed Was that favoured and most blessed, Mother of the only son, Trembling, grieving, bosom heaving, While perceiving, scarce believing, Pains of that illustrious one. Who the man who called a brother Would not weep, saw he Christ's mother In such deep distress and wild, Who could not sad tribute render, Witnessing that mother tender, Agonizing with her child. For his people's sins atoning, him she saw in torments groaning, given to the scourge's rod, saw her darling offspring dying, desolate, forsaken, crying, yield his spirit up to God. Make me feel thy sorrow's power, that with thee I tears may shower. Tender mother, fount of love, make my heart with love unceasing, burn towards Christ the Lord, that pleasing I may be to him above. Holy Mother, this be granted, that the slain one's wounds be planted, firmly in my heart to bide. Of him wounded, all astounded, depths unbounded, for me sounded, all the pangs with me divide. Make me weep with thee in union, with the crucified communion, in his grief and suffering give, near the cross with tears unfailing, I would join thee in thy wailing here as long as I shall live. Maid of maidens, all excelling, be not bitter me repelling, make thou me a mourner too, make me bear about Christ's dying, share his passion shame defying, all his wounds in me renew. Wound for wound be there created, with the cross intoxicated, for thy son's dear sake I pray, May I, fired with pure affection, Virgin, have through thee protection In the solemn judgment day. Let me by the cross be warded, By the death of Christ be guarded, Nourished by divine supplies, When the body death hath riven, Grant that to the soul be given Glories bright of paradise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Myrrh-Bearers by Margaret Junkin Preston From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Myrrh-Bearers Footnote Myrrhophore, a name given to the Marys in Greek Christian art. Three women crept at break of day a grope along the shadowy way where joseph's tomb and garden lay with blanch of woe each face was white as the grey orient's waxing light brought back upon their awe-struck sight the sixth day scene of anguish fast the starkly standing cross they passed and breathless neared the gate at last each on her throbbing bosom bore a burden of such fragrant store as never there had lain before spices the purest richest best that e'er the musky east possessed from ind to araby the blest had they with sorrow riven hearts searched all jerusalem's costliest marts in quest of narts whose pungent arts should the dead sepulchre imbue with vital odours through and through, T'was all their love had leave to do. Christ did not need their gifts, and yet Did either Mary once regret her offering? Did Salome fret over the unused aloes? Nay, they counted not as waste that day, 
what they had brought their lord the way home seemed the path to heaven they bear thenceforth about the robes they wear the clinging perfume everywhere so ministering as erst did these go women forth by twos and threes unmindful of their morning ease through tragic darkness murk and dim where'er they see the faintest rim of promise all for sake of him who rose from joseph's tomb they hold it just such joy as those of old to tell the tale the mary's told myrrh still at home abroad what paths have holy women trod burdened with votive gifts for god rare gifts whose chiefest worth was priced by this one thought that all sufficed their spices had been bruised for christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain litany by sir robert grand from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia litany saviour when in dust to thee lo we bend the adoring knee when repentant to the skies scarce we lift our weeping eyes o oh, by all thy pains and woe suffered once for man below bending from thy throne on high hear our solemn litany by thy helpless infant years by thy life of want and tears by thy days of sore distress in the savage wilderness by the dread mysterious hour of the insulting tempter's power turn o oh, turn a favouring eye hear our solemn litany by the sacred griefs that wept over the grave where lazarus slept by the boding tears that flowed over salem's loved abode by the anguished sigh that told treachery lurked within thy fold from thy seat above the sky hear our solemn litany by thine hour of dire despair by thine agony of prayer by the cross the nail the thorn piercing spear and torturing scorn by the gloom that veiled the skies over the dreadful sacrifice listen to our humble cry hear our solemn litany by thy deep expiring groan by the sad sepulchral stone by the vault whose stark abode held in vain the rising god o oh, from earth to heaven restored mighty reascended lord listen listen to the cry of our solemn litany end of poem this recording is in the public domain the christ by richard chenovic's trench from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the christ he might have reared a palace at a word who sometimes had not where to lay his head time was when he who nourished crowds with bread would not one meal unto himself afford he healed another scratch his own side bled side hands and feet with cruel piercings gored twelve legions girded with angelic sword stood at his beck the scorned and buffeted oh wonderful the wonders left undone yet not more wonderful than those he wrought o oh, self-restraint surpassing human thought to have all power yet be as having none o oh, self-denying love that thought alone for needs of others never for its own end of poem this recording is in the public domain abide with me by henry francis light from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox org by thomas peter abide with me 
Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, Help of the helpless soul, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O oh, thou who changest not, abide with me. Not a brief glance, I beg a passing word. But as thou dwelt with thy disciples, Lord, familiar condescending, patient, free, come not to sojourn, but abide with me. Come not in terrors as the King of kings, but kind and good with healing in thy wings. Tears for all woes, a heart for every plea. Come, friend of sinners, and thus bide with me. Thou on my head in early youth did smile, And though rebellious and perverse meanwhile, Thou hast not left me oft as I left thee. Unto the close, O Lord, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who, like thyself, my guide and stay can be? Through cloud and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Hills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth's vain shadows flee. In life and death, O Lord, abide with me. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Disciples After the Ascension by Arthur Penryn Stanley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the First Disciple Jason in Canada as the Second Disciple Craig Franklin as the Third Disciple Sonia as the Fourth Disciple And Lianya as the Fifth Disciple The Disciples After the Ascension he is gone beyond the skies a cloud receives him from our eyes gone beyond the highest height of mortal gaze or angel's flight through the veils of time and space passed into the holiest place all the toil the sorrow done all the battle fought and won he is gone and we return and our hearts within us burn olivet no more shall greet with welcome shout his coming feet never shall we track him more on genesareth's glistening shore never in that look or voice shall zion's walls again rejoice he is gone and we remain in this world of sin and pain in the void which he has left on this earth of him bereft we have still his work to do we can still his path pursue seek him both in friend and foe in ourselves his image show he is gone we heard him say good that i should go away gone is that dear form and face but not gone his present grace though himself no more we see comfortless we cannot be no his spirit still is ours quickening freshening all our powers he is gone towards their goal world and church must onward roll far behind we leave the past forward are our glances cast still as words before us range through the ages as they change wheresoe'er the truth shall lead he will give whate'er we need he is gone but we once more shall behold him as before in the heaven of heavens the same as on earth he went and came in the many mansions there place for us he will prepare in that world unseen unknown he and we may yet be one he is gone but not in vain wait until he comes again he is risen he is not here far above this earthly sphere evermore in heart and mind where our peace in him we find to our own eternal friend thitherward let us ascend end of poem this recording is in the public domain wrestling jacob by charles wesley from the world's best poetry volume 4 the Higher Life, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Wrestling Jacob. First Part. Come, O thou traveller unknown, whom still I hold but cannot see. My company before is gone, and I am left alone with thee. With thee all night I mean to stay, and wrestle till the break of day i need not tell thee who i am my sin and misery declare thyself hast called me by my name look on thy hands and read it there but who i ask thee who art thou tell me thy name and tell me now in vain thou strugglest to get free i never will unloose my hold art thou the man that died for me the secret of thy love unfold wrestling i will not let thee go till i thy name thy nature know wilt thou not yet to me reveal thy new unutterable name tell me i still beseech thee tell to know it now resolved i am 
wrestling i will not let thee go till i thy name thy nature know what though my shrinking flesh complain and murmur to contend so long i rise superior to my pain when i am weak then am i strong and when my all of strength shall fail i shall with the god-man prevail second part yield to me now for i am weak but confident in self-despair speak to my heart in blessings speak be conquered by my instant prayer speak or thou never hence shalt move and tell me if thy name be love tis love tis love thou diedst for me i hear thy whisper in my heart the morning breaks the shadows flee pure universal love thou art to me to all thy bowels move thy nature and thy name is love my prayer hath power with god the grace unspeakable i now receive through faith i see thee face to face i see thee face to face and live in vain i have not wept and strove thy nature and thy name is love i know thee saviour who thou art jesus the feeble sinner's friend nor wilt thou with the night depart but stay and love me to the end thy mercies never shall remove thy nature and thy name is love the sun of righteousness on me hath risen with healing in his wings withered my nature's strength from thee my soul its life and succour brings my help is all laid up above thy nature and thy name is love contented now upon my thigh i halt till life's short journey end all helplessness all weakness i on thee alone for strength depend nor have i power from thee to move thy nature and thy name is love lame as i am i take the prey hell earth and sin with ease o'ercome i leap for joy pursue my way and as a bounding heart fly home through all eternity to prove thy nature and thy name is love end of poem this recording is in the public domain the conversion of saint paul by john kebble from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the narrator, Thomas Peter as Jesus, Jason in Canada as St. Paul, and Lian Yao as Sin. The Conversion of St. Paul The midday sun, with fiercest glare, broods over the hazy, twinkling air. Along the level sand, the palm tree's shade unwavering lies, just as thy towers, Damascus, rise to greet yon wearied band the leader of that martial crew seems bent some mighty deed to do so steadily he speeds with lips firm closed and fixed eye like warrior when the fight is nigh nor talk nor landscape heeds what sudden blaze is round him poured as though all heaven's refulgent hoard in one rich glory shone one moment and to the earth he falls what voice is inmost heart appalls voice heard by him alone for to the rest both words and form seem lost in lightning and in storm while saul in wakeful trance sees deep within that dazzling field his persecuted lord revealed with keen yet pitying glance and hears the meek upbraiding call as gently on his spirit fall as if the almighty sun were prisoner yet in this dark earth 
nor had proclaimed his royal birth nor his great power begun ah wherefore persecutest thou me he heard and saw and sought to free his strained eye from the sight but heaven's high magic bounded there still gazing though untaught to bear the insufferable light who art thou lord he falters forth so shall sin ask of heaven and earth at that last awful day when did we see thee suffering nigh and passed thee with unheeding eye great god of judgment say ah little dream our listless eyes what glorious presence they despise while in our noon of life to power of fame we rudely press christ is at hand to scorn or bless christ suffers in our strife and though heaven's gates long since have closed and our dear lord in bliss reposed high above mortal ken to every ear in every land though meek ears only understand he speaks as he did then ah wherefore persecute ye me tis hard ye so in love should be with your own endless woe no though at god's right hand i live i feel each wound ye reckless give to the least saint below i in your care my brethren left not willing ye should be bereft of waiting on your lord the meanest offering ye can make a drop of water for love's sake in heaven be sure is stored oh by those gentle tones and dear when thou hast stayed our wild career thou only hope of souls ne'er let us cast one look behind but in the thought of jesus find what every thought controls as to thy last apostle's heart thy lightning glance did then impart zeal's never dying fire so teach us on thy shrine to lay our hearts and let them day by day intenser blaze and higher and as each mild and winning note like pulses that round harp strings float when the full strain is o'er left lingering on his inward ear music that taught as death drew near love's lesson more and more so as we walk our earthly round still may the echo of that sound be in our memory stored christians behold your happy state christ is in these who round you wait make much of your dear lord end of poem this recording is in the public domain rock of ages by edward h rice from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada as the narrator lian yao as the maiden sonia as the woman craig franklin as the old man and thomas peter as the mourner rock of ages such hymns are never forgotten they cling to us through our whole life we carry them with us upon our journey we sing them in the forest the workman follows the plough with sacred songs children catch them and singing only for the joy it gives them now are yet laying up for all their life food of the sweetest joy henry ward beecher rock of ages clasp for me thoughtlessly the maiden sung fell the words unconsciously from her girlish gleeful tongue sang as little children sing sang as sing the birds in june fell the words like light leaves down on the current of the tune rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee let me hide myself in thee felt her soul no need to hide sweet the song as song could be and she had no thought beside all the words unheedingly fell from lips untouched by care dreaming not that they might be on some other lips a prayer 
Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Rock of ages, cleft for me. T'was a woman sung them now, pleadingly and prayerfully, every word her heart did know. Rose the song as storm-tossed bird beats with weary wing the air, every note with sorrow stirred, every syllable a prayer. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Lips grown aged sung the hymn trustingly and tenderly, voice grown weak and eyes grown dim. Let me hide myself in thee. Trembling though the voice and low, rose the sweet strain peacefully like a river in its flow sung as only they can sing who life's thorny path have passed sung as only they can sing who behold the promised rest rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee rock of ages cleft for me sung above a coffin lid underneath all restfully all life's joys and sorrows hid nevermore o oh storm-tossed soul nevermore from wind or tide nevermore from billows roll wilt thou need thyself to hide could the sightless sunken eyes closed beneath the soft gray hair could the mute and stiffened lips move again in pleading prayer still i still the words would be let me hide myself in thee End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Art Thou Weary? By St. Stephen the Sabbate. Translated from the Latin by John Mason Neal. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin as the question and thomas peter as the answer art thou weary art thou weary art thou languid art thou sore distressed come to me saith one and coming be at rest hath he marks to lead me to him if he be my guide in his feet and hands are wound prints and his side is there diadem as monarch that his brow adorns yea a crown in very surety but of thorns if i find him if i follow what his guerdon here many a sorrow many a labour many a tear if i still hold closely to him what hath he at last sorrow vanquished labour ended jordan past if i ask him to receive me will he say me nay not till earth and not till heaven pass away finding following keeping struggling is he sure to bless saints apostles prophets martyrs answer yes end of poem this recording is in the public domain When Gathering Clouds Around I View by Sir Robert Grant From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter When Gathering Clouds Around I View When gathering clouds around I view And days are dark and friends of you on him i lean who not in vain experienced every human pain he sees my wants allays my fears and counts and treasures up my tears if aught should tempt my soul to stray 
from heavenly wisdom's narrow way to fly the good i would pursue or do the sin i would not do still he who felt temptation's power shall guard me in that dangerous hour if wounded love my bosom swell deceived by those i prize too well he shall his pitying aid bestow who felt on earth severe woe at once betrayed denied or fled by those who shared his daily bread if vexing thoughts within me rise and sore dismayed my spirit dies still he who wants vouchsafe to bear the sickening anguish of despair shall sweetly soothe shall gently dry the throbbing heart the streaming eye when sorrowing o'er some stone i bend which covers what was once a friend and from his voice his hand his smile divides me for a little while thou saviour mark'st the tears i shed for thou didst weep for lazarus dead and oh when i have safely passed through every conflict but the last still still unchanging watch beside my painful bed for thou hast died then point to realms of cloudless day and wipe the latest tear away End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Star of Bethlehem by Henry Kirk White From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Star of Bethlehem When marshalled on the nightly plain the glittering host bestud the sky one star alone of all the train can fix the sinner's wandering eye hark hark to god the chorus breaks from every host from every gem but one alone the saviour speaks it is the star of bethlehem once on the raging seas i rode the storm was loud the night was dark the ocean yawned and rudely blowed the wind that tossed my foundering bark deep horror then my vitals froze death struck i seized the tide to stem when suddenly a star arose it was the star of bethlehem it was my guide my light my all it bade my dark foreboding cease and through the storm and danger's thrall it led me to the port of peace now safely moored my perils o'er i'll sing first in night's diadem forever and forever more the star the star of bethlehem end of poem this recording is in the public domain love to christ from an hymn of heavenly love by edmund spencer from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin love to christ with all thy heart with all thy soul and mind thou must him love and his behest embrace all other loves with which the world doth blind weak fancies and stir up affections base thou must renounce and utterly displace and give thyself unto him full and free that full and freely gave himself to thee 
then shalt thou feel thy spirit so possessed and ravished with devouring great desire of his dear self that shall thy feeble breast inflame with love and set thee all on fire with burning zeal through every part entire that in no earthly thing thou shalt delight but in his sweet and amiable sight thenceforth all world's desire will in thee die and all earth's glory on which men do gaze seem dirt and dross in thy pure sighted eye compared to that celestial beauties blaze whose glorious beams all fleshly sense doth daze with admiration of their passing light blinding the eyes and lumining the sprite then shall thy ravished soul inspired be with heavenly thoughts far above humane skill and thy bright radiant eyes shall plainly see the idea of his pure glory present still before thy face that all thy spirits shall fill with sweet enragement of celestial love kindled through sight of those fair things above end of poem this recording is in the public domain the way the truth and the life by theodore parker from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada the way the truth and the life o oh, thou great friend to all the sons of men who once appeared in humblest guise below sin to rebuke to break the captive's chain and call thy brethren forth from want and woe we look to thee thy truth is still the light which guides the nations groping on their way stumbling and falling in disastrous night yet hoping ever for the perfect day yes thou art still the life thou art the way the holiest know light life the way of heaven and they who dearest hope and deepest pray toil by the light life way which thou hast given theodore parker end of poem this recording is in the public domain knocking ever knocking by harriet beecher stowe from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada as the narrator sonia as she and craig franklin as he knocking ever knocking behold i stand at the door and knock revelations chapter three verse twenty knocking knocking ever knocking who is there tis a pilgrim strange and kingly never such was seen before ah sweet soul for such a wonder undo the door no that door is hard to open hinges rusty latches broken bid him go wherefore with that knocking dreary scared asleep from one so weary say him no knocking knocking ever knocking what still there oh sweet soul but once behold him with the glory crowned hair and those eyes so strange and tender waiting there open open once behold him him so fair ah that door why wilt thou vex me coming ever to perplex me for the key is stiffly rusty and the bolt is clogged and dusty many fingered ivy vine seals it fast with twist and twine weeds of years and years before choke the passage of that door knocking knocking what still knocking he's still there what's the hour the night is waning in my heart a drear complaining and a chilly sad unrest ah this knocking 
it disturbs me scarce my sleep with dreams unblest give me rest rest ah rest rest dear soul he longs to give thee thou hast only dreamt of pleasure dreamt of gifts and golden treasure dreamt of jewels in thy keeping waked to weariness of weeping open to thy soul's one lover and thy night of dreams is over the true gifts he brings have seeming more than all thy faded dreaming did she open doth she will she so as wondering we behold grows the picture to a sign pressed upon your soul and mine for in every breast that liveth is that strange mysterious door the forsaken and betangled ivy gnarled and weed bejangled dusty rusty and forgotten there the pierced hand still knocketh and with ever patient watching with the sad eyes true and tender with the glory crowned hair still a god is waiting there end of poem this recording is in the public domain tomorrow by lope de vega translated from the spanish by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada as the narrator and lian yao as the guardian angel tomorrow lord what am i that with unceasing care thou didst seek after me that thou didst wait wet with unhealthy dews before my gate and pass the gloomy nights of winter there o oh, strange delusion that i did not greet thy blessed approach and o oh, to heaven how lost if my ingratitude's unkindly frost has chilled the bleeding wounds upon thy feet how oft my guardian angel gently cried soul from thy casement look and thou shalt see how he persists to knock and wait for thee and oh how often to that voice of sorrow to-morrow we will open i replied and when the morrow came i answered still to-morrow end of poem this recording is in the public domain I gave my life for thee by Francis Ridley Havergal from the world's best poetry volume 4 the higher life part 1 read for librivox.org by thomas peter i gave my life for thee i gave my life for thee my precious blood i shed that thou mightst ransom me and quicken from the dead i gave my life for thee what hast thou given for me i spent long years for thee in weariness and woe that an eternity of joy thou mightest know i spent long years for thee hast thou spent one for me my father's home of light my rainbow circle throne i left for earthly night for wanderings sad and lone i left it all for thee hast thou left all for me i suffered much for thee more than thy tongue may tell of bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell 
I suffered much for thee, what canst thou bear for me? And I have brought to thee, down from my home above, salvation full and free, my pardon and my love. Great gifts I brought to thee, what hast thou brought to me? O oh, let thy life be given, thy years for him be spent. World fetters all be ribbon, and joy with suffering plent. I gave myself for thee, give thou thyself to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jesus Shall Reign by Isaac Watts From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Jesus Shall Reign Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun does his successive journeys run his kingdom spread from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no more from north to south the princes meet to pay their homage at his feet while western empires own their lord and savage tribes attend his word to him shall endless prayer be made and endless praises crown his head his name like sweet perfume shall rise with every morning sacrifice People and realms of every tongue dwell on his love with sweetest song, and infant voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Messiah, a sacred eclogue, in imitation of Virgil's polio, by Alexander Pope. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Messiah, a sacred eclogue in imitation of Virgil's polio. Ye nymphs of Sulaima, begin the song. To heavenly themes sublimer strains belong. The mossy fountains and the sylvan shades, the dreams of Pindus, and the Ionian maids, delight no more. O thou my voice inspire, who touched Isaiah's hallowed lips with fire, wrapped into future times, the bard begun. A virgin shall conceive, a virgin bear a son. From Jesse's root behold a branch arise, whose sacred flower with fragrance fills the skies. The ethereal spirit o'er its leaves shall move, And on its top descends the mystic dove. Ye heavens, from high the dewy nectar pour, And in soft silence shed the kindly shower. The sick and weak the healing plant shall aid, From storm a shelter, and from heat a shade. All crimes shall cease and ancient frauds shall fail. Returning justice lift aloft her scale, peace o'er the world her olive wand extend, and white-robed innocence from heaven descend. Swift fly the years, and rise the expected morn. O spring to light, auspicious babe, be born. See, Nature hastes her earliest wreaths to bring, With all the incense of the breathing spring. See lofty Lebanon his head advance, See nodding forests on the mountains dance, See spicy clouds from lowly Saron rise, And Carmel's flowery top perfumes the skies. Hark! A glad voice the lonely desert cheers, 
prepare the way a god a god appears a god a god the vocal hills reply the rocks proclaim the approaching deity lo earth receives him from the bending skies sink down ye mountains and ye valleys rise with heads declined ye cedars homage pay be smooth ye rocks ye rapid floods give way the saviour comes by ancient bards foretold hear him ye deaf and all ye blind behold he from thick films shall purge the visual ray and on the sightless eyeball pour the day to see the obstructed paths of sound shall clear and bid new music charm the enfolding ear the dumb shall sing the lame his crutch forgo and leap exulting like the bounding roe no sigh no murmur the wide world shall hear from every face he wipes off every tear in adamantine chains shall death be bound and hell's grim tyrant feel the eternal wound as the good shepherd tends his fleecy care seeks freshest pasture and the purest air explores the lost the wandering sheep directs by day or sees them and by night protects the tender lambs he raises in his arms feeds from his hand and in his bosom warms thus shall mankind his guardian care engage the promised father of the future age no more shall nation against nation rise nor ardent warriors meet with hateful eyes nor fields with gleaming steel be covered o'er the brazen trumpets kindle rage no more but useless lances into scythes shall bend and the broad falchion in a ploughshare end then palaces shall rise the joyful sun shall finish what his short-lived sire begun their vines a shadow to their race shall yield and the same hand that sowed shall reap the field the swain in barren deserts with surprise sees lilies spring and sudden verdure rise and starts amidst the thirsty wilds to hear new falls of water murmuring in his ear on rifted rocks the dragon's late abodes the green reed trembles and the bulrush nods waste sandy valleys once perplexed with thorn the spiry fir and shapely box adorn to leafless shrubs the flowery palms succeed and odorous myrtle to the noisome weed the lambs with wolves shall graze the verdant mead and boys in flowery bands the tiger lead the steer and lion at one crib shall meet and harmless serpents lick the pilgrim's feet the smiling infant in his hand shall take the crested basilisk and speckled snake pleased the green lustre of the scales survey and with their forky tongue shall innocently play rise crowned with light imperial salem rise exalt thy towery head and lift thy eyes see a long race thy spacious courts adorn see future sons and daughters yet unborn in crowding ranks on every side arise demanding life impatient for the skies see barbarous nations at thy gates attend walk in thy light and in thy temple bend see thy bright altars thronged with prostrate kings and heaped with products of Sabean springs. For thee, Idume's spicy forests blow, and seeds of gold in Ophir's mountains glow. See heaven his sparkling portals wide display, and break upon thee in a flood of day. No more the rising sun shall gild the morn, nor evening Cynthia fill her silver horn. But lost, dissolved in thy superior rays one tide of glory one unclouded blaze o'erflow thy courts 
the light himself shall shine revealed and god's eternal day be thine the seas shall waste the skies in smoke decay rocks fall to dust and mountains melt away but fixed his word his saving power remains thy realm forever lasts thy own messiah reigns end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dies Irae by Thomas A. Celano, translated from Latin by John A. Dix, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Four, The Higher Life, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Dies Irae. That day, a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess a day of clouds and thick darkness a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers zephaniah one fifteen sixteen day of vengeance without morrow earth shall rend in flame and sorrow as from saint and seer we borrow ah what terror is impending when the judge is seen descending and each secret veil is rending to the throne the trumpet sounding through the sepulchres resounding summons all with voice astounding death and nature mazed are quaking when the grave's long slumber breaking man to judgment is awaking on the written volumes pages life is shown in all its stages judgment record of past ages sits the judge the rays the reigning darkest mysteries explaining nothing unavenged remaining what shall i then say unfriended by no advocate attended when the just are scarce defended king of majesty tremendous by thy saving grace defend us fount of pity safety send us holy jesus meek forbearing for my sins the death crown wearing save me in that day despairing worn and weary thou hast sought me by thy cross and passion bought me spare the hope thy labours brought me righteous judge of retribution give o oh, give me absolution ere the day of dissolution as a guilty culprit groaning flushed my face my errors owning hear o god thy suppliant moaning thou to mary gavest remission heardst the dying thief's petition bedst me hope in my contrition in my prayers no worth discerning yet on me thy favour turning save me from that endless burning give me when thy sheep confiding thou art from the goals dividing on thy right a place abiding when the wicked are rejected and by bitter flames subjected call me forth with thine elected low in supplication bending heart as though with ashes blending cure for me when all is ending when on that dread day of weeping guilty man in ashes sleeping wakes to his adjudication save him god from condemnation end of poem this recording is in the public domain my god i love thee by saint francis xavier translated from the latin by edward caswell from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada my god i love thee my god i love thee not because i hope for heaven thereby nor because those who love thee not must burn eternally thou o oh my jesus thou didst me upon the cross embrace 
for me didst bear the nails and spear and manifold disgrace and griefs and torments numberless and sweat of agony yea death itself and all for one that was thine enemy then why o blessed jesus christ should i not love thee well not for the hope of winning heaven nor of escaping hell not with the hope of gaining aught not seeking a reward but as thyself hast loved me o everlasting lord e'en so i love thee and will love and in thy praise will sing solely because thou art my god and my eternal king saint francis xavier end of poem this recording is in the public domain veni creator spiritus by saint gregory translated from the latin by john dryden from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter veni creator spiritus sometimes attributed to the emperor charlemagne the better opinion however inclines to pope gregory the first called the great as the author and fixes its origin somewhere in the sixth century creator spirit by whose aid the world's foundations first were laid come visit every pious mind come pour thy joys on humankind from sin and sorrow set us free and make thy temples worthy thee o source of uncreated light the father's promised paraclete thrice holy fount thrice holy fire our hearts with heavenly love inspire come and thy sacred unction bring to sanctify us while we sing plenteous of grace descend from high rich in thy sevenfold energy thou strength of his almighty hand whose power does heaven and earth command preceding spirit our defence who dost the gifts of tongues dispense and crownst thy gift with eloquence refine and purge our earthly parts but o oh, inflame and fire our hearts our frailties help our vice control submit the senses to the soul and when rebellious they are grown then lay thy hand and hold them down chase from our minds the infernal foe and peace the fruit of love bestow and lest our feet should step astray protect and guide us on the way make us eternal truths receive and practice all that we believe give us thyself that we may see the father and the son by thee immortal honor endless fame attend the almighty father's name the saviour son be glorified who for lost man's redemption died and equal adoration be eternal paraclete to thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain Veni Sancte Spiritus by King Robert the Second of France Translated from Latin by Catherine Winkworth From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Veni Sancte Spiritus Written in the 10th century by Robert the Second, the gentle son of Hugh Capet It is often mentioned as second in rank to the Dies Irae come holy ghost thou fire divine from highest heaven on us down shine comforter be thy comfort mine come father of the poor to earth come with thy gifts of precious worth come light of all of mortal birth thou rich in comfort ever blessed the heart where thou art constant guest 
who gives the heavy laden rest come thou in whom our toil is sweet our shadow in the noonday heat before whom morning flieth fleet bright sun of grace thy sunshine dart on all who cry to thee apart and fill with gladness every heart whatever without thy aid is wrought or skilful deed or wisest thought god counts it vain and merely naught o cleanse us that we sin no more over parched souls thy waters pour heal the sad heart that acheth sore thy will be ours in all our ways o melt the frozen with thy rays call home the lost in error's maze and grant us lord who cry to thee and hold the faith in unity thy precious gifts of charity that we may live in holiness and find in death our happiness and dwell with thee in lasting bliss end of poem this recording is in the public domain o fire of god the comforter o ignis spiritus paracliti by saint hildegard translated from the latin by r f littledale from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by jason in canada o fire of god the comforter o ignis spiritus paracliti o fire of god the comforter o life of all that live holy art thou to quicken us and holy strength to give to heal the broken-hearted ones their sorest wounds to bind o spirit of all holiness o lover of mankind o sweetest taste within the breast o grace upon us poured that saintly hearts may give again their perfume to the lord o purest fountain we can see clear mirrored in thy streams that god brings home the wanderers that god the lost redeems o breastplate strong to guard our life o bond of unity o dwelling place of righteousness save all who trust in thee defend those who in dungeon dark are prisoned by the foe and for thy will is i to save let thou the captives go o surest way that through the height and through the lowest deep and through the earth dost pass and all in firmest union keep from thee the clouds and ether move from thee the moisture flows from thee the waters draw their rills and earth with verdure glows and thou dost ever teach the wise and freely on them pour the inspiration of thy gifts the gladness of thy lore o praise to thee o joy of life o hope and strength we raise who givest us the prize of light who art thyself all praise end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Holy Spirit by Robert Herrick From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter The Holy Spirit In the hour of my distress When temptations me oppress and when i my sins confess sweet spirit comfort me when i lie within my bed sick at heart and sick in head and with doubts discomforted sweet spirit comfort me when the house doth sigh and weep 
and the world is drowned in sleep yet mine eyes the watch do keep sweet spirit comfort me when the artless doctor sees no one hope but of his fees and his skill runs on the least sweet spirit comfort me when his potion and his pill has o oh, none or little skill meet for nothing but to kill sweet spirit comfort me when the passing bell doth toll and the furies in a shoal come to fright a parting soul sweet spirit comfort me when the tapers now burn blue and the comforters are few and that number more than true sweet spirit comfort me when the priest his last hath prayed and i nod to what is said cause my speech is now decayed sweet spirit comfort me when god knows i'm tossed about either with despair or doubt yet before the glass be out sweet spirit comfort me when the tempter me pursueth with the sins of all my youth and half damns me with untruth sweet spirit comfort me when the flames and hellish cries fright mine ears and fright mine eyes and all terrors me surprise sweet spirit comfort me when the judgment is revealed and that opened which was sealed when to thee i have a sweet spirit comfort me end of poem this recording is in the public domain hope of the human heart from anima mundi by richard monkton mills lord houghton from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Hope of the Human Heart God is good, and flight is destined for the callow wing, and the high appetite implies the food, and souls must reach the level whence they spring. O life of very life, set free our powers, hasten the travail of the yearning hours. Thou, to whom old philosophy bent low, to the wise few mysteriously revealed, Thou whom each humble Christian worships now, In the poor hamlet and the open field, Once an idea, now comforter and friend, Hope the human heart, descend, descend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What is Prayer? by James Montgomery From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the narrator And Lian Yao as the angels What is Prayer? Prayer is the soul's sincere desire Uttered or unexpressed The motion of a hidden fire That trembles in the breast Prayer is the burthen of a sigh, the falling of a tear, the upward glancing of an eye, when none but God is near. Prayer is the simplest form of speech, 
that infant lips can try prayer of the sublimest strains that reach the majesty on high prayer is the contrite sinner's voice returning from his ways while angels in their songs rejoice and cry behold he prays prayer is the christian's vital breath the christian's native air his watchword at the gates of death he enters heaven with prayer the saints in prayer appear as one in word and deed and mind while with the father and the son sweet fellowship they find nor prayer is made by man alone the holy spirit pleads and jesus on the eternal throne for sinners intercedes o thou by whom we come to god the life the truth the way the path of prayer thyself hast trod lord teach us how to pray end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Time for Prayer by Georgiana Bennett From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Time for Prayer When is the time for prayer? When the first beams that light the morning sky Ere for the toils of day thou dost prepare Lift up thy thoughts on high Commend the loved ones to his watchful eye. Morn is the time for prayer. And in the noontide hour, if worn by toil or by sad cares oppressed, then unto God thy spirit's sorrow pour, and he will give thee rest. Thy voice shall reach him through the fields of air. Noon is the time for prayer. When the bright sun hath set, whilst yet eve's glowing colours deck the skies when the loved at home again thou'st met then let the prayer arise for those who in thy joys and sorrow share eve is the time for prayer and when the stars come forth when to the trusting heart sweet hopes are given and the deep stillness of the hour gives birth to pure bright dreams of heaven kneel to thy god ask strength life's ills to bear night is the time for prayer when is the time for prayer in every hour while life is spared to thee in crowds or solitudes in joy or care thy thoughts should heavenward flee at home at morn and eve with loved ones there bend thou the knee in prayer End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Seasons of Prayer by Henry Ware, Jr. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Seasons of Prayer To Prayer, To Prayer for the morning breaks, and earth in her maker's smile awakes. His light is on all below and above, the light of gladness and life and love. Oh, then, on the breath of this early air, send upward the incense of grateful prayer. To prayer, for the glorious sun is gone, and the gathering darkness of night comes on. Like a curtain from God's kind hand it flows To shade the couch where his children repose. Then kneel, while the watching stars are bright, And give your last thoughts to the guardian of night. To prayer, for the day that God has blessed Comes tranquilly on with its welcome rest. It speaks of creation's early bloom, It speaks of the prince who burst the tomb. Then summon the spirit's exalted powers, And devote to heaven the hallowed hours. There are smiles and tears in the mother's eyes, For her newborn infant beside her lies. 
O oh, hour of bliss, when the heart o'erflows with rapture a mother only knows. Let it gush forth in words of fervent prayer, let it swell up to heaven for her precious care. There are smiles and tears in that gathering band, where the heart is pledged with a trembling hand. What trying thoughts in her bosom swell, as the bride bids parents and home farewell. Kneel down by the side of the tearful pair, and strengthen the perilous hour with prayer. Kneel down by the dying sinner's side, and pray for his soul through him who died. Large drops of anguish are thick on his brow. Oh, what are earth and its pleasures now? And what shall assuage his dark despair but the penitent cry of humble prayer? Kneel down by the couch of departing faith, and hear the last words the believer saith. He has bidden adieu to his earthly friends. There is peace in his eye that upward bends. There is peace in his calm, confiding air, for his last thoughts are God's, his last words, prayer. The voice of prayer at the sable bier, a voice to sustain, to soothe, and to cheer. It commends the spirit to God who gave. It lifts the thoughts from the cold, dark grave. It points to the glory where he shall reign, who whispered, Thy brother shall rise again. The voice of prayer in the world of bliss, but gladder, purer than rose from this. The ransomed shout to their glorious king, where no sorrow shades the soul as they sing, but a sinless and joyous song they raise and their voice of prayer is eternal praise. Awake, awake, and gird up thy strength to join that holy band at length, to him who unceasing love displays, whom the powers of nature unceasingly praise. To him thy heart and thy hours be given, for a life of prayer is the life of heaven. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Exhortation to Prayer by Margaret Mercer From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Canada Exhortation to Prayer Not on a prayerless bed not on a prayerless bed compose thy weary limbs to rest for they alone are blessed with balmy sleep whom angels keep nor though by care oppressed or anxious sorrow or thought in many a coil perplexed for coming morrow lay not thy head on prayerless bed for who can tell when sleep thine eyes shall close that earthly cares and woes to thee may e'er return. Arise, my soul, slumber control, and let thy lamp burn brightly, so shall thine eyes discern things pure and sightly. Taught by the Spirit, learn never on a prayerless bed to lay thine unblessed head. Hast thou no pining want, or wish, or care? that calls for holy prayer has thy day been so bright that in its flight there is no trace of sorrow and thou art sure to-morrow will be like this and more abundant dost thou yet lay upon thy store and still make plans for more thou fool this very night thy soul may wing its flight hast thou no being than thyself more dear that ploughs the ocean deep and when storms sweep the wintry lowering sky for whom thou wakest and weepest oh when thy pangs are deepest seek then the covenant ark of prayer for he that slumbereth not is there his ear is open to thy cry oh then on prayerless bed lay not thy thoughtless head arouse thee weary soul nor yield to slumber till in communion blest 
with the elect ye rest those souls of countless numbers and with them raise the note of praise reaching from earth to heaven chosen redeemed forgiven so lay thy happy head prayer crowned on blessed bed margaret mercer end of poem this recording is in the public domain